My grandfather's grandson. I am, of course, my grandfather's grandson, or at least I'm one of them. He had five. Of them, only my cousin Dave Lindsay and I remain, and I've not seen him for a hundred years or so. At least it seems that way. He now lives in Texas. I often wonder what my grandfather would think of us, because neither of us ever knew him. I was born in 1944, David in 49. Grandfather died in 1946, and I regret that I was too young to have any memories. <clears throat> Still, I have an impression of him, one that's very visible in the portrait accompanying these words. It's a selfie taken around 1900, when he was only 31. A year or so later, he would marry my grandmother, Elizabeth Bessie Bottomley, a Milan area school teacher, and purchased the weekly, the Vermilion News, for a few hundred bucks. When he took this photo, he was printing foreman at the Lorraine Times Herald newspaper, where else in Lorraine, Ohio. During the first few months of their marriage, in their ownership of the weekly newspaper, they rode bicycles commuting from a residence in Lorraine to Vermilion to work at the original shop. It was located in a place that was known as the Wells Building on the west side of Grand Street, just north of the railroad. By November of 1904, my great-grandfather had built a new building for the business with an apartment above it, also located on Grand Street, just south of the tracks. The daily commute was therefore reduced from a 15-mile bike ride to 14 steps. Quite an improvement. <laughs> As fate would have it, ownership of the building has remained in the family since 1904. Almost 12 years ago, I purchased it, purchased it for my sister with the intention of turning it into a museum. That's because everything, or very near everything, that was there in 1904 is still there today. Among those things are my grandfather's cameras and photographs. He was what I would term to be a semi-pro photographer. In the early years of the 20th century, it was almost a requirement that every small town news editor, publisher, owner knew how to use a, use a camera. As a result, I have approximately 300 or 400 of his glass negatives, as well as a plethora of film negatives and photographs. Those who follow this column have seen many of them. They are by no means great photographs like those accomplished by many of his contemporaries, but they are, locally speaking, historically relevant photographs. They are also part of my heritage. A number of them were used to make color-tinted postcards. During the 19th and well into the 20th century, colorants were often added to printed images by hand, for it was the most cost-efficient way to produce color images. Most of those cards were of lithograph type. Photo lithography was more successful due to cheaper production costs. A magnified photo lithograph shows a series of dots produced by separating the image into light and dark areas or different colors with screens. Extremely fine screens could produce a very sharp image. A lithographic postcard might have up to 10 colors due to multiple passes through the press. Some postcards exhibit a combination of colo type and lithography, which created some very nice looking cards. Several of the enlarged, enlarged Vermilion scenes recently reproduced and scattered about town are actually reproductions of some of my grandfather's gray colored, i.e. black and white, photographs that had been made into color tinted postcards. In the early 20th century, these postcards were, in essence, the world's first Facebook postings. They were sent everywhere, and there were obviously a lot of likes, on the, or the cards would not still exist. In any case, I am my grandfather's grandson and a great fan of his work. While I certainly wish that I'd known him, I consider myself fortunate to have and know his work. My heritage is that of having an ability to understand the history of our community through both his eyes and words. 
I certainly could not have asked for more.